Significant figures, what are these? Well, this is one thing that will make chemistry very different from what you do in math. In chemistry, when we do calculations, we're concerned with significant figures. You can see here we have two balances. One of them does reads one place to the right of the decimal. One of them reads actually four places to the right of the decimal. I think you can see the one that reads four places to the right of the decimal is much more accurate. Notice there are sliding doors on there and you shut that because even air currents would change the mass as you're measuring that. So that's a much more accurate balance. So significant figures allow us to show this difference when we're making measurements and doing calculations. All measurements have some uncertainty associated with them. We are not able to eliminate uncertainty with measurements. And last, the digits tell us something about the accuracy or uncertainty of a measurement. How many significant figures are in the following measurements? Well, I have seven numbers here. So what we're gonna do is go through the rules for significant figures. And as we do that, look at the number of significant figures in each of these values. So let's start with the first number. 252. What rule goes with this? Digits other than zero are always significant. So if you look at this number, we have a two, a five, and a two. All these are non-zeros. So this would give us three significant figures. Next rule. The second rule. Zeros at the end of the number and the right of the decimal are significant. We look at our next number. This is 25.0. Notice we know the two and the five are both significant because they're non-zeros. But the zero is also significant because it fills both of these qualifications. It is at the end of the number and it's also to the right of the decimal. So the second number also has three significant figures. Let's look at the next number, 25. Notice this is not 25.0. So this means we know, remember the two and the five are both and the five are both significant, and so this number only has two significant figures. So when you see a decimal at the end, a decimal point and then a zero, that tells us we used a much more precise measuring device in taking that measurement. Next one. Zeros between two other significant figure, figures or digits are always significant. So let's look at this number. We've got 202. We know the two, first two is significant, because it's a non-zero. The last two is significant because it's non-zero as well. But the zero becomes significant here because it is between two significant figures. Number four has three significant figures. Let's look at another example for this. Let's say we have the number 2.022. How many significant figures are in this number? First, we see there's a non-zero two, a non-zero two, a non-zero two. All these are significant figures because they're non-zeros. And then there's a zero that's between these significant figures. So that gives us, for this one, four significant figures. Our last rule. Zeros used solely for placing the decimal are not significant. So let's look at the example here. We have 0 0.025. These zeros at the very beginning are seen as just placeholders. They're not showing the precise, the precision of the measurement. For this, we'd simply count the 2 and the 5, and this would have two significant figures. Let's look at one more example. If we have the number 250, so for this number we have the two is significant, the five is a significant. Notice this zero is at the end of the number, but it's not to the right of the decimal. So number seven also has two significant figures. One is, well, first before we do that, let's talk about when significant figures apply and do not apply. They apply when measured quantities are non-exact. So basically when you have measurements, that's when you have significant figures. So mass, grams, liters, any, any measurement, uh, when, when do they not apply? They do not apply if you're told the number is exact and there is no uncertainty. And also, in that case, the number has an infinite number of significant figures. Let's look at some examples. Well, we're going to be looking at a lot of chemical reactions in this class. And in chemical reactions, we have what we call a stoichiometric ratio. This reaction, we see hydrogen and oxygen combining to form water. Now the ratio at which hydrogen and oxygen combine is actually a two to one. Now there's not a one written here, but it's understood. So this two to one ratio has a infinite number of significant figures. This is a two to one ratio, but this has an infinite number of significant figures. You will see that with all chemical reactions. A next example, conversion units or defined numbers. For example, we know a thousand meters is exactly one kilometer that it has an infinite number of significant figures. 
Also, for metric conversions, we can consider that as well. One inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters. That is an exact number, and we can say that has an infinite number of significant figures. One last example. Counting. If you count something, let's say we look at the room, there's 22 students. There are exactly 22 students. That's not a measurement. So that is a place where significant figures do not apply. Now last, we're going to talk about what is a way to remember all these rules. So what I have here is a map of the United States. Now hopefully you remember the two oceans that are on each side of the United States. On one side we have the Pacific Ocean. Now on the other side we have the Atlantic Ocean. Now the letters P and A are important because we're going to use those when we look at numbers. P is going to stand for decimal present. A is going to stand for decimal absent. So what we're going to do if the decimal is present, we're going to draw a line through the zeros starting on the left or the Pacific side, and all the numbers that are left will be significant figures. If the decimal is absent, it means there's not a decimal, we're going to start from the right or the Atlantic side and draw a line through all the zeros starting on the right side, and all the numbers that are left will be the number of significant figures. Now, if you look at your first list of numbers, we're going to just look at those again, it'll give us the exact same answers that we, we uh, found when we went through all the rules. So let's start. So 252, decimal present or absent. This time the decimal is absent, so we start from the Atlantic side, and notice there's no zeros to draw through, so all of these are significant, and this gives us three significant figures. Number two, decimal present or absent. We see there is de definitely a de decimal here, so that means we start with from the Pacific side and draw through all the zeros, but there's no zeros starting from that side, so that means all these numbers are significant, and so this gives us three significant figures, so we count the two, the five, and the zero. Example number three, 25, decimal present or absent. Well, the def, de, decimal is def, definitely absent, so we start from the right or the Atlantic side. There's no zeros to draw through, so everything that's left is significant, and so this gives us two significant figures. Next number, 202, decimal present or absent. In this case, the decimal is absent, and so we start from the Atlantic side and draw through all the zeros. There's no zeros, so everything that's there is significant. So that would leave us three significant figures. And notice for all these examples, I put grams. The reason I did that is because I want to emphasize that significant figures are used with measurements, and all these are measurements, masses. Uh, number five. Number five, we have 250. Uh, decimal present or absent, the, the decimal is absent in this one, so we start from the Atlantic side and draw through the zero, we, so we draw through that zero means that zero is not significant. So these two numbers right here, the two and the five are significant, so this gives us two significant figures. Number six, decimal present or absent, there is definitely a decimal right there, so that means we're going to start from the Pacific side or the left side and draw through all the zeros until we get through a non-zero, which is the two, and so that leaves us a 2, and the 5 is as significant, and so that gives us two significant figures. Our last one, number 7, decimal present or absent. We see there's a, definitely a def decimal there, so we say the decimal is present. So we'll draw through all the non-zeros from the Pacific side, which there are none. So that means all these numbers are significant, so that this one's going to give us four significant figures. So these are the rules for identifying the number of digits that are significant. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks.